Yeah, welcome. Thank you. So Ben Tøye has been a national health politician in Norway for more than 10 years. Um, so he has a well, long career in, in health, but he also has a training in hospitality management. So he also understands the consumers and the citizens as consumers and citizens, not only patients. That's true. Um, I demonstrated that the Nordic countries are really in a prime position, in a green zone, and we haven't gotten there without actually real efforts. We have managed to reduce in appropriate use, uh, and we have managed to really cut down uh, use of antibiotics in agriculture. Sweden banned the use of antibiotics in agriculture in 1986, 20 years before the European Union ban. But still, it's not enough. We see in Norway, your country, increasing trends of resistance. How do you look at this problem? What should we do? The Royal Highness, uh, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would say that uh, this is uh, our common health uh, climate problem because it's if you look into the future it is as scary as the climate problem because we see in the future that uh, sickness that we today see as no problem as common will be deadly again and we will all see that modern medicine is threatened hmm. by uh, armor and so we s look into a scary future if we are not solving this problem and to solve the problem, we have to use a lot of the same mechanism as we use when we are uh, comparing the climate change. Because we need to act local, we need to act globally, and we need to act multi-sector. And as you've shown us, it also is a wicked problem because it's so complex. So what we have to do is that every country has to have their own national strategy action plans to have both reducing the use of uh, antimicrobials, but also the correct use. And then we also have to work multi-sectoral, both by the food industry, the environment uh, uh, agency, and also in the healthcare system. Uh, because if you are not doing it uh, multi-sectoral, then we will lose the battle. And we also have to find solution on a global level. Because as you see, Scandinavia is now in a green zone, mm. but we see that it's, this is not a problem that we can uh, build high uh, borders to protect us. It's mm. not possible. People are traveling, food are traveling. Uh, we are going abroad for holiday, bringing this back home. So to build uh, walls against Amar is not uh, a solution. So we have to act between, uh, between the countries. So let's start on this local or national action. Um, what, what are you doing in Norway as a, as a health minister or maybe together with other ministers? First of all, we have made a national strategy and that's a multi-sectoral strategy. Uh, the, the main owners of the strategy is the health department, the environment department, the fishery department and uh, the, the agriculture department. And then we are making action plans for the health sector and for the food, food producing uh, sectors. We have to reduce the use of antibiotics in Norway, and our goal is to reduce the human use of antibiotics with 30% until 2020. So we have a few years to do this work, but we are seeing we are going in the right direction. But then we have to work really, really close with the people who work in the health sector and have them to work with us to reduce the use of antibiotics. Let, let me give you one example of what we do. We we'll have learned from the drug industry. And what are they doing when they have a new drug and they want the doctors to use it? Of course, they employ a doctor who go around and visit every local doctor having a cup of coffee, showing him figures of uh, how, how good this drug is, and then the local doctor is using the drug. We do the same, but in another way. We have doctors that is trained to go and visit the local doctors, showing their figures, on how they use antimicrobials, how is the correct use, and what we see is this is giving results. They are reducing the use of antibiotics. So in a way, it's a peer pressure. So they compare themselves to others. They compare themselves to others, and every doctor wants to do a good job. And when they compare them to others and, and see the research, then they are also uh, following uh, what the advice is. 
So you, you also have peers because you are a health minister and you meet health ministries in other countries. Having a 30% reduction is quite a bold target. Is that something you kind of boost about when you go abroad <laughs> and, and say that we will make it, even from a quite low level compared yes. to many other countries? Of course. Is there a peer pressure there internationally? Is, there is a peer pressure and we are working together. We have uh, uh, the Swedish and the British uh, health minister had a big breakfast during the uh, WHO annual meeting this year. And we have colleagues sitting around the table, compare each other and uh, encourage each other to do a better job on this, uh, this issue because that is important. But it's also very important to do uh, what the Dutch health minister and the Dutch government have done, also to work to have meetings with also the agriculture minister, the environment ministers, meeting and see how can we work together uh, multi-sectoral on this, uh, this very important issue. I know you, you are a health minister, but um, of course this is also a, a setting on food. And uh, do, do you want to comment a bit on what we have done in the Nordic countries on kind of meat production and in Norway fish production? And can that be a, a model to other countries? Yes, because what I think what on the regular side, what is most important I think we have done in the Nordic country is say that the veterans is not allowed to earn money by subscribing anti mercobol I think that's the biggest driver. If it's not possible to earn money on uh, describe, to prescribe it, then they will reduce uh, how much they sell, because that is, that is easy. Mm. And uh, the next is that we also have to see that this is bad for the business. We saw it in Norway one year ago when there was big, uh, news, the biggest newspaper was writing about uh, uh, anti mirabis in the chicken. Then the consumption of chicken uh, rise down immediately. And, uh, and uh, what we have seen uh, for the Norwegian uh, fish farming industry is that they started to pre prepare for this 20 years ago. Mm. But what they was, they was thinking that, okay, if the European consumers see picture from the beautiful Norwegian fjords and the, the picture is going down below where they're farming the fish and they will find uh, armor in the, in, the, in the wild fish, then that will really destroy our market. So they started to develop vaccines for the salmon. So every little baby salmon in Norway is now uh, vaccinated. And the use of antibiotics have gone down with 98%, and the reduction is more than triple at the same time. Mm. So it is po possible if you combine thinking about your market with innovation, and then suddenly we have two industries in Norway, the fish farming and the production of vaccines. Mm. And I cannot, I, I will believe that this is also possible for uh, meat, meat production, it should also be possible to vaccine the small uh, pigs or cows or chickens, I think. Is, is this something the, the food industry in, in the Nordics are taking up? Do you, you believe so? Would, would it be something to even strengthen the position? I think so. And uh, I see that, of course, Norway is not a very big uh, producer of meat. We are al almost only produce meat for our own market. Mm. And in Norway, we have a very strict regulation. If we find armor in uh, any livestock, then we take out the livestock. Mm. Of course, that is more difficult in bigger producing countries than in Norway. But what we see is that the consumers and the industry in all the Nordic countries is more and more aware uh, in this, uh, on these uh, issues and is trying to reduce the use of antibiotics and also using this us as an asset in the marketing of their products internationally. Mm. Coming back to this as, uh, as you started, as uh, the, the health sector's uh, climate problem being multi-sectoral and, and complex, um, how, how can we then tackle that? Because it, it has taken some years to get to the Paris Agreement on, on mm. climate. What is, what is the, the, the next Paris meeting for antimicrobial resistance? That's uh, in September uh, when we have the high-level meeting in, during the uh, UN meeting. And uh, that will be a very important step, I think, because this is the first time we can uh, actually bring armor on the table for the state leaders. And it's only the third time a health issue has been in that level in the UN mm. ever in the history. It's the, it's the HIV 
and uh, and the uh, uh, NCD agenda, and now it's the RMR. And I think it, what is most important for the meeting in September is that this is no not longer only an issue for the health minister or the agriculture minister, but it's become an uh, issue for the state leaders, and that they give us the mandate we need to uh, to go back and do the work to make what you have seen, innovation, uh, control and access, uh, t uh, and uh, do, it, uh, do it globally. And uh, we need this time to have success, because the time is running away from us. Mm. And uh, I have met people in the health uh, environment that has been working for these issues for 20, for 30 years. It's a known issue, it's predicted, but it's have not been taken seriously. Now we have the opportunity in September. Mm. If we not, have not succeeded this time, then I'm looking very dark on the future for our common health. So what are you saying then to Prime Minister Erna Solberg from Norway? In, what are you whispering <laughs> in her ears before she's come, going to New York? I whisper in her ear that she has a very good story to tell about how we have tackled this in Norway and that this story should be told internationally to inspire others to follow up. Thanks. Thanks to Minister Hoye.